So sh should India be caring about Vikram Buddhi? Is this a case of racism? It's also a story that raises questions about how far we can go with free speech on the internet. We'll be crossing over to uh, Mumbai where we're joined by uh, Vikram's father, Captain Subarao. Uh, Captain Subarao, this is obviously a very, very tough time for you campaigning for uh, a just trial for your son. Uh, let me ask you very, very clearly. Do you believe that your son posted those remarks against President Bush and the punishment he's getting is not proportionate or do you believe he did not even make those comments? He has not made any of those uh, postings. And not only that, it is uh, Secret Service people in January 2006 when they interrogated him they themselves found that uh, uh, that Vikram is not involved with that. And on February 3rd, 2006, the Secret Service, United States Secret Service, made a formal report saying that Vikram Buddhi is not a threat to any of these Secret Service protectives. Having said that, how they have arrested him on 14th April, no new developments have taken place from January or February to April. So it appears to me that this entire case is malafide. And then the whole world is talking about internet messages. Whereas in the charge, they call indictment, there is not even a whisper about the internet messages. So therefore, when somebody keeps on saying about the freedom of speech, if only they have looked at it as internet messages, then all the internet messages are saying whoever is the author, no one knows till now who the author is. Okay, so you're suggesting that the case is entirely malafied. Let me take that to Asim Chabra, well-known journalist joining us from New York this evening. Asim, is this a case that is finding uh, resonance at all within the South Asian community there? And how is the case being perceived? Is Vikram seen as somebody who's been framed? Or is Vikram seen as somebody who went too far but is being uh, punished disproportionately? You know, I have to admit, uh, Barkha, the case really did not make much head headlines among the South Asian community here, which is, which is really unfortunate. Um, I would like to believe that justice is colorblind in this country, which is not so all the time. I would like to believe that judges are colorblind and jury is colorblind, which is, again doesn't happen all the time. So therefore, I mean... I, I do not think that he was tried any differently because he's an Indian. I hope that's not the case. The South Asian community has not woken up to this case and they probably should be much more concerned about it. But I think more than anything else, he needs a good legal team to advise him. And that's the unfortunate thing. And, you know, we're right near the sentencing time now because he's going to be sentenced in November, right? That's right, Asim. He's going to be sentenced on the 19th of November. But can I ask you, you believe that the, uh, the, the, the justice system in the United States is color brine, but a lot of people here made much of the fact that the jury that delivered, uh, that found him guilty, uh, was all white. There are also comparisons being drawn uh, to a case of a child, a minor on Facebook, who took a poll on whether President Obama should be assassinated or not. And when Secret Service found that there was no real threat, the child's identity was protected. So do you believe that there's a hint of double standards at all uh, in this uh, scene? It, it, it's quite possible. Look, there have been enough incidents in this country where people were wrongfully imprisoned. There was this famous case in Tulia, Texas, uh, which was actually eventually defended by an Indian American, Vanita Gupta, where I forget how many, 30, 40 African Americans were wrongfully imprisoned um, late 1990s on charges of drug charge, related charges, and it was based on one man's w uh, uh, word, basically. He was you know, proven to be a racist cop. Um, and Vanita, who was working on behalf of, she was a young lawyer working on behalf of the uh, NAACP, was able to prove that actually they were wrongfully imprisoned. So it happens. I'm not saying it happens all the time. But, the, you know, race does end up playing a case. And, you know, that's the, you know, the, the, the flaw with the jury system. I mean, unless you can get a jury, what is supposed to be a jury of your peers, but if it is an all-white jury, 
there is always a possibility, I'm not saying it always happens, but there's always a possibility that juries then judges based on color, race, ethnicity. Um, again, it does not happen in America all the time. Justice is colorblind often most of the times. All right, fair point. Let me take that to uh, Somnath Bharti, a friend of Vikram, somebody who's been campaigning on this issue. You have a letter written to you uh, by Vikram from inside prison. Do you, do you want to share what he's thinking at this point? No, he, uh, he, in fact, he's been saying that uh, he's very thankful to the country and he's been thankful to the people who have been running this campaign. In fact, he was not even aware that uh, uh, he's, he, you know, his sentencing is scheduled on November 19th. Hmm. The defense attorney who has been appointed by the court to defend him now, has only visited him once, in June 2009. So, Amrit, what's the argument? We asked his father as well. You're saying basically that the posts were not his, or are you saying, I, I repeat the question because that's at the heart of the debate, that he left some posts on the internet, but he should be covered by the, you know, free speech rights guaranteed to American citizens? No, I've not traveled that far. In fact, uh, I, since beginning itself, I have been stuck with this point, that they have to prove that these postings were his. I have seen the evidences. I have been to the court. I collected the exhibits from the case file. And I c collected that ARP log, which is, the ex which is the only document available to prove that the postings were his. Yeah. Now, the ARP log shows that one MAC address, though it's a, it's a technical thing, but I'll share with the, the audience here, that one, one MAC address mapped to two different IP addresses at the same time, at the same hour, at the same second, which is not possible, technically. And I'm saying so because I have a background in IT, I'm from IIT, so uh, this is impossible. Such a thing makes the ARP log as poisonous, as poisoned. So you're saying he's been framed. But he's been framed. But why? Now, but why, uh, when the Secret Service agents, when I talked to Bikram, he said this with me, Secret Service agents, when they, they arrested him on April 14th, and they could not tell him that what transpired between February 3rd to April 14th, what new has developed since then. Then they said that you are a political prisoner. Now we'll teach you a lesson. A political prisoner. Political prisoner. Okay, I want to come back to you with, the, with that letter written by Vikram, but I want to go back to Vikram's father, Captain Subarao, uh, with us from Mumbai. Captain Subarao, did your son ever share his opinions about George Bush with you, his opinions about the Iraq war? It's not unusual, actually, to find all kinds of uh, uh, angry messages that sometimes take on a venomous air on the Internet because people feel nobody's watching. So can you share with us, you know, whether your son had a strong opinion perhaps on the Iraq war, like millions of people across the world? Well, uh, Vikram is not a political person, and he never discussed anything about uh, expressing anything. But the most important thing here is that someone said that whether it is color blind and all that. What, it, what needs to be discussed, what needs to be understood, the greatest irony in this case is, on one side they are talking about internet messages. There is not even a whisper in the charge about the internet messages. If the internet messages are mentioned in the charge, it is only advocacy of violence. Advocacy of violence is not, unless it is causing imminent danger, it is a protected speech as per the law laid down with the Supreme Court. Because such a law exists, what they have done is, they did not mention internet message in, in, the, in the indictment at all. So it looks a great irony. On one side, the whole lot of discussion is going on about internet messages. Yeah, but they're not and in the charge, there is nothing. Okay, let me take that so to the lawyer. Let me take that to the lawyer on the panel. Harish Salve is with us this evening as well, one of the best known lawyers of this uh, country. Harish, what do you make of this? Because on one hand, it raises questions about free speech, the internet, how far do you go? But now the arguments kind of shifted. The people here, the, his father, his friends are saying, look, he didn't even make those posts. How, what, are, what is the ethical dilemma at the heart of this case, Harish? There are, yeah, there are, there are two separate uh, issues, uh, Barkha, which we have to keep in mind. If it is true that uh, some Indian lad did post these kind of hate messages inciting people to violence, there is a problem. And uh, it's not a question of uh, whether it is colorblind or uh, not colorblind. Lord Denning, for example, and as a person of his eminence, when in England he said that jury trials are a problem in a multicultural society, multiracial society. And of course, Indians got angry because they thought the, he was pointing a finger at them. But uh, we have a problem in jury trials, and it becomes worse because 
America, when it is involved in the Iraq war and the body bags are coming back, are looking for villains and looking for villains to punish. And, you know, you we have this young Indian kid who, if it is proved that uh, he has done something like this, then the system does become a little hard. But Harish, and, what about uh, the comparison? One can understand. Harish, I, I get what you're saying. You're saying at the heart of it is whether Vikram made those posts or not. But what about the comparisons to That's this? Right. Young, but, but what about this comparisons to this young American kid who apparently asked for a poll on whether Obama should be assassinated or not if the health care bill didn't go through, uh, and and when Secret Service discovered that he was a child and in other words not able to cause any real. A threat to President Obama, they actually then worked overtime to protect his identity. So, uh, does that matter whether a hate speech can actually cause the threat, cause the danger that it's threatening to make? Or do you believe that hate speech in the internet has to be treated like hate speech in any published media? See, hate speech per se is not something which can cause this kind of difficulty. Hate speech by a person like uh, Osama bin Laden, if he uses the internet as a message to incite his people to uh, violence, as he, as he sometimes does, or, or his followers do, surely that is something which is indictable. But if uh, some angry youngster posts uh, uh, some misguided messages or something of that sort, it may not be. Now, the trouble is, in, some, in American states, unlike India, in American states, they have their own special laws and if, if you know the law of the state, it becomes a sort of a, sometimes a bit of a subjective assessment of whether it, it, it is something which can incite to violence and that is where the uh, way the case is presented to a jury and uh, whether how it is defended before a jury becomes uh, very important. Okay, let me and take... His father is saying he was not properly defended. Now that, yeah. that's a separate issue. Right. Uh, but and also, I think that's the real issue which we should be looking at. And I, th I think that's an important point that, you know, that, uh, that, you know, does he have a lawyer who can provide him at least a chance at a fair trial? Asim Chabra, if I can go back to you, uh, how are cases that involve people of Indian origin, Indians, we had Anand John previously, very different kind of case, now we have Vikram Buddhi, but when you think about it, you know, there must be so many people who posted hate messages against President Bush. It seems a little peculiar, even if you assume that the messages were true, that they've caught hold of this one Indian from Purdue University. Well, you know, there's a difference between posting a hate message. There are a lot of people who will protest against Bush's policies. Uh, they're opposed to Bush. But there's a difference between that and basically asking people to assassinate the president. Okay, when you call for an assassination of the president, as in this case, apparently the message asked for Iraqi people to kill George Bush, then the FBI and the Secret Service has to step in and investigate beyond whether, what the message is all about, whether there's a real potential threat of, of the, or is it just, just words on the internet. Um, I, I, not knowing much about the case, I, I don't think that there was an example being made of this guy. I don't think so, because obviously this was not a big news at all in the mainstream press or in the ethnic press also. This never made it anywhere. So, you know, when you make an example, you want, you want people to know about it, really. I think he just did not have good defense advice. I mean, you know, Anand John's case was a very different case, but, you know, people kept saying, oh, he was being framed, he was being framed because yeah. he's brown skin, he's an Indian. Uh, the jury found him guilty, and there's enough evidence that goes that proves that Anand John probably did commit those crimes. Right, I wasn't so comparing the I two. Don't think, yeah. uh, I don't think the justice here, I don't... Yeah, I get what you're saying. I, I wasn't comparing the two cases, just, just raising uh, the example. And I think you make an interesting point to say that this is not a case that's being reported in either the diaspora media or the mainstream media. Somnath, has that been part of the problem, to actually create awareness? And as Harish is saying, to actually get him a lawyer who can defend himself. You're wanting to share that letter uh, that Vikram wrote. Yeah, do you want me to read the whole yeah, letter? No, just a paragraph. All right, he's, he in fact, he finally said in the last paragraph, that I'm saying strong and hope full confidence, have full confidence that eventually all your efforts will succeed. Thank you very much for all your support. What has happened to me can happen to anybody. And we must stand united in this fight for justice. Why has it been so difficult to create awareness? I mean, this is, you know, gold medalist from IIT Mumbai, Purdue, good scholar. What, what's been the problem? Why, why uh, has it been difficult to get the attention of the government, get the attention of the media? See, the case came to me in June, June 2009, and since then I've been working hard on the case. And uh, now, now probably we have reached a stage where we have uh, uh, you know, public cons consensus on the issue. Yeah. And we have approached the government, external affairs minister has, has, has come on, on TV and saying that he, he's working on it. But the fact of the matter is that how, the, how he's working, I don't understand. 
Because when I met Meera Sankar, ambassador to, of India to United States, and I asked her uh, what action you are taking on Vikram Bodhi's case, she says she is not even aware of the case. And, and this was when? This was on uh, uh, 10th of October. Well, as recent as that, and that is part of the problem, that why is there such little awareness of the case? Let me get final comments now from Captain Subarao and Harish Salve. Captain Subarao, to you first, you've had your own shares of uh, controversies, you were accused of spying, you cleared your name in that case. Do you think that in a sense you are at all optimistic uh, that this could go differently uh, for your son? And what has been the main hurdle? Uh, has it been financial? Has it been getting him a good lawyer? What's been the main hurdle? The main hurdle is, if only they follow the procedure established by law in the United States, Vikram Budhi would have been out a long time ago. i just give a simple example. The trial is supposed to be a jury trial. Judge is required to instruct the jury on law. He refused and he openly said, I am not instructing on First Amendment. All the discussion that is going on First Amendment, he is required to instruct the jury. He has not done that. Then he told the defense attorney, I am not allowing you to explain the First Amendment and linking with the evidence on record. Mm. He made him to keep quiet. Then the jury sent a written note saying that we do not understand your instructions to us. We see a contradiction. The judge sends a written reply saying there is no contradiction. Go ahead and deliberate. Now this makes, of these three points, makes the, the entire trial unfair. And secondly, the indictment is false. Because everyone is talking about uh, internet messages, there is nothing there. Supreme Court of the United States says the indictment has to stand on its own or fall. You okay. cannot bring in additional documents. Okay. So therefore, indictment is fall, the trial is unfair. Okay, got, got what so you're saying. I'm I've, I've got what you're saying, but the fact is that we're heading towards a sentencing stage uh, in, this, uh, in this case. Now, Harish Salve, wrap this up for us. Where do you see this case going from here? But, uh, well, uh, if what the father says is correct. Uh, the uh, one of the important uh, grounds on which uh, trials are challenged or rather verdicts are challenged is mistrial and if, if he is right that the judges uh, refuse to instruct the jury appropriately on what exactly is the law and believe me this area of the law is somewhat uh, obscure I mean even lawyers and judges they need time to understand this branch of the law where does free speech end and where do you end up in punishable hate speech and so if the jury needed proper instruction and that was not given, that can become a good ground itself to challenge it. All right. I think what's clear from our panel this evening is that this is not a case that should be decided upon in a hurry at least. And I think that's what his family and friends are pushing for. Uh, and at least a case that perhaps the government of India needs to pay closer attention to. Uh, not even about 20 plus odd days left for the sentencing to take place. Vikram Budhi could face 35 years in prison. Does he deserve that or does the government need to intervene? We'll have to leave it there tonight. Harish Salve, Asim Chabra, Captain Subarao and Somnath Bharti. Thank you for your time on the buck stops here tonight.